So we're going to start the public hearing at 5 p.m. We zoom all set up, Casey. Ready to roll. Okay, and the reason for the hearing is the Harvick Unified Development Bylaw Changes. And do I need to add anything else to that, Casey? Great. So item two is our zoning administrator, Kristen Leahy, and Heather Carrington with Carrington Community Development to talk about proposed changes to the town's unified development bylaws. Here and after referred to as bylaws. <laughs> Take it away. Heather, do you want, how do you want to approach this, Heather? I'm sorry, I can't see you. No, it's fine. Um, well, let me introduce myself first and kind of give an overview of what it is that we'll be talking about tonight. And then I'm going to take my lead from you, Kristen, on how much you want me to present or not present here. Um, so my name is Heather Carrington, and I'm the principal of Carrington Community Development Services, and I'm the consultant who's been hired using a grant from the Department of Housing and Community Development, a bylaw modernization grant, to work with the Planning Commission to specifically look at four districts in Hardwick in order to make changes to the bylaws that will, um, the intention is really to encourage more housing in those uh, districts. However, the bylaws that we'll be discussing tonight um, have been developed over the last uh, year and a half. And since then, there have been a couple of big flooding events. So though uh, the uh, flood hazard overlay has been a big part of what Kristen has been looking at, so I want to kind of clarify that there's two separate pieces to this. The piece that was funded by the state is that, and that I'm working on is only four districts of the community, and it's specifically about changing the bylaws to allow for more housing. And then there's a big, huge slew of other changes that the Planning Commission has also looked at separately. So Kristen's going to be your go-to on that particular piece of it. And Kristen, I've, I've provided um, a PowerPoint presentation that I believe is there printed out for the select board to see and for the public to take a look at if they'd like. And it really goes over a high-level overview of what those districts are and what the uh, specifics of the zoning changes are that we are proposing here. We've had one previous uh, planning commission public hearing and really put some pretty strong support overall for what's being proposed. So I don't want to over present to you if there's not a lot of questions or a lot of issues, um, but I'm happy to do whatever you prefer for me to do. It would be, is it in here? Is it, might be. it is in there. Is the power one? Is it the power? Is it that it was at right the there? bottom of my list. Okay. So the PowerPoint presentation, did you? Hold on. Do you? Not that okay. Hold on. What about the? Um, oh, right here. This one. No. No for today. I think. Oh. Apologize, Heather. It's okay. I. I'm oh no! Please don't apologize. Um, it, it basically, I mean, the obviously. That's it. Because it's three point eight. Yeah. Got it. Mr. Nelson, you, you want to get it? Yeah. yeah. I got it. Um. <clears throat> All right, let me just we did it. get it. Let me do a share screen here. I got a, there's a lot going on here, so bear with me. Um, I can move that. I have it here, so I'm, I'm able to do okay. it too. Okay. Okay. We got it. It's up, Heather. It's on yep. share. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you yeah. see it, Heather? You want to sit over here? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Oh, I'm off. That's good. I can see it. Yeah, I can see that very good. Thanks. Or do you want to do share screen on yours? Is that easier? I prefer so I can go okay. through it at my own pace if that's okay with you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> good. That's great. That that's great. great. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I apologize for the confusion. Charged with, and I've worked 
extensively with the planning commission on. Um, let me move this so I can see that. Okay. So just uh, to talk about the districts that we're specifically dealing with. Um, Harvick has seven zoning districts covering 30 minute square miles and one flood hazard overlay district, which we'll be talking about extensively um, when Kristen starts speaking. We are dealing with four of those seven districts, and actually the geography that's being addressed is relatively uh, it's relatively small. Um, it is only, I'm sorry, I can't see on my screen. It's like six mile, uh, 6.5 square miles of Harvick's total. So, very, very small piece of it. And that includes the Central Business District, Village Neighborhood, Highway Mixed Use Zoning District, and Compact Residential District. So those are all the places that I've colored here on this map. And there are pieces of those both in downtown Harvard and in East Harvard. So more on that as we go forward, because there's currently uh, planning going on for, as you all know, going on for East Harvard. Um, so I think that some of the zoning changes we're making here are likely to have revisions or uh, revised um, districting for East Hardwood as they come to the conclusion of that and their you know, recommendations for what that what the community would like that to look like. Um, so we started this, I think it was last April, um, and it was really, uh, we were going from scratch looking at the bylaws and then about two or three months into it, the Vermont Home Act or Act 47 was enacted. Um, and that was, uh, that basically sets limitations and specifications on what municipalities can have in their municipal bylaws, particularly related to housing. So what it does is it limits the number of parking spaces that municipalities can require per residential unit. It requires that multifamily buildings are allowable uses in districts where any residential is an allowable use, um, and that's up to four units. It sets building and lot standards for residential units, establishes some uses as protected public uses, and it allows a 40% bonus, density bonus, and one floor height bonus for affordable housing development. So that really was looking to make sure that across the state, zoning isn't keeping multifamily housing from being developed and we weren't excluding housing in certain areas because as you all know, we have a huge housing crisis in the state of Vermont. So we looked at uh, the Home Act and made sure that we were aligned with the Home Act because we are required and actually Kristen has been required to interpret your zoning as if the zoning had already been changed to meet the Home Act, so it's a statutory requirement at the state level. Then we also looked at enabling, enabling Better Places, a zoning guide for Vermont neighborhoods, and that's commonly referred to in the housing field as or planning field as zoning for great neighborhoods. Um, and we looked at six key topics for reform. We looked at dimensional requirements, parking standards, allowable uses, street standards, access to dwelling units, and the development review process, and how easy or difficult that is in hardware. Um, and so we had initially planned to do the entire project through this lens. So the, the Home Act actually made it a lot easier. Uh, we didn't have to make decisions about some of these things because they had already been made at a state level. So at a very high level, I'm gonna go through what the proposed changes are based on the analysis using the Home Act and Zoning for Great Neighborhoods. So in the Central Business District, and I have maps here of where, this, uh, where it is in downtown Harvard and East Harvard for you. Proposed changes would make single family, two family, and multi-family well as allowable uses rather than conditional uses. Um, so they are by right uses. Someone wants to build one of those in the central business district, that would be a permit that Kristen would give, you know, if it meets all of the other requirements. To reduce the minimum frontage in the central business zone, business zoning district from 50 feet to 25 feet, and to reduce the minimum parking requirement to one space per dwelling unit for all dwelling types. You had a variety of different requirements for different types of dwellings, but the Home Act makes it clear that it'll be one space per dwelling unit. This is the village neighborhood district in the blue. Proposed changes to that are again 
to make multifamily dwellings at allowable use to re reduce the allowable minimum lot size to 5,000 square feet from 7,500 square feet. And the, from, the Home Act requires that uh, zoning allows for five housing units uh, per acre, per square acre. Um, so that uh, gets it well under the target number. So you actually have a higher level of density there, but you have to be able to build five single family homes on uh, a square acre, according to the state statute. Uh, reduce the allowable minimum lot frontage to 53 feet from 70 feet. Reduce the allowable minimum lot area per unit to 1,000 square feet from 3,500 square feet for class one parcels, and reduce that minimum lot area per unit to 3,500 feet from 7,500 square feet for class two and class three, and again, reduce the parking requirements. So what we're building in in all of these is allowing for the possibility that you can have more density in these areas. So it's, you, people don't have to have a smaller lot, but they can have a smaller lot. And it's not something that would, a small lot is not something that would preclude developers or property owners from building more. Having an mixed use district, as you can see, is in the orange, so it's outside approaching Hardwick and over at East Hardwick as well. Again, you're seeing a lot of the same changes. Multifamily dwellings, Reducing the allowable minimum lot size to 5,000 square feet from 20,000 square feet. Um, the 20,000 square feet uh, wouldn't fly under Vermont Home Act, so that, that was way too big for what's required. Um, to reduce allowable minimum lot frontage to 65 feet from 100 feet. Reduce allowable minimum lot area to 12,500, I'm sorry, 1,250 square feet from 5,000 square feet for class one parcels, and again, parking requirement is only one space per dwelling unit. Compact residential is the final district that we looked at, and it's really very consistent again. It's about changing the dimensional standards, the minimum lot frontage, minimum lot area required per unit, um, and changing the parking requirement as well. There were some changes that as I read through your zoning, I saw things that might also want to be changed. Some of them for the Home Act, just some of them for consistency. Um, we're required to add an exemption to the maximum building height standard to allow for a bonus story for affordable housing. That just brings it into alignment with the Vermont Home Act. Um, to reduce the minimum lot area per mobile home in a mobile home park from 6,000 square feet to 5,000 square feet, so it's aligned across the board with requirements for other housing types. Um, so we're not pulling it to a higher standard. And again, to make sure we're not pulling mobile home parks to different standards than other housing types, uh, to remove the requirement that mobile home parks have a 25-foot landscape buffer around the entire perimeter of a mobile home park. Uh, that change eliminates treating mobile homes differently from other homes, um, which you know doesn't really align with the idea of fair housing. Again, for fairness, to remove the requirement that mobile home parks have a minimum of 100 square feet of indoor storage for each mobile home in the park, it's a higher standard. And lastly, to add temporary shelters to the protected public uses included in the bylaw, and that's required at the state level. We also um, propose a uh, change to the current zoning district boundaries, um, and that's just to align with the urban compact um, so, so that there's not a discrepancy between different ways of looking at land, um, and it really impacts uh, 11 parcels that, that would be taken out of the compact residential district and put into the village neighborhood district. And I'm gonna click back where you so you can see again what that changes. And the list of the specific parcels is included in the report um, that I provided uh, for the plan, but I provided from the Planning Commission to the Select Board. So you can take a look at what those specifics are. And that's a very, very brief overview of the piece that we looked at. I can take questions, Kristen, or you can talk about blood hazard if you'd like. I think I'd open it to questions. We do have, uh, Member of the public here. 
Six apartment unit, you get six spots, yeah. and that's the minimum. They, that's the maximum we can ask them to have, to have yes. no matter what. Even well, no matter what, like depends on me if it's a. Well, you know what I'm saying. Other things. Yeah, there's it. a lot of. We had it so that if you were an accessory dwelling, you needed one level. If you had a multi-unit, you had right. one point five. If you're a house, you had to have one. I mean, so you were good. penalizing someone. No, I was thinking multi. more uh, along the lines, maybe not of an apartment building, but as. Uh, you know, multi three or four unit places where people have two vehicles. Right. So if you yeah. got a three unit townhouse, you know, the likelihood of six vehicles <coughs> being involved is pretty good now that it's just the way so, it's go. So that's not. But we can't require. We can't require. That right. is the state statute now. But as you know, if you're a developer, you're going to want to have the parking available that is. Well, we safe. have, you know, we have issues right now where there's people that are, I would call developers. Um, putting rental units in that don't have one one, well, would, have to one wouldn't be appropriate. Those are those are, are pre-existing. We're okay. talking about new structures and so, new changes. Right, but but, but yeah. you know something new today is pre-existing tomorrow. So I know, but no, we <laughs> cannot require them to have two. I mean, <coughs> so that's that's kind of a problem because we get in a situation where now where somebody has one unit and there's. You know, the, the, the landlord don't care, and they get two vehicles back there, and they're encroaching on some other. And so the state on that public land. Yeah. Well, it could be public land, the neighbor's land, or it doesn't really matter. If they're encroaching, if they only have one parking lot, <laughs> they have two rights of parking somewhere on the lawn. Well, at an intersection, cutting off the view. Other, does anyone in the room understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 Something that we did not have to struggle with at the planning commission but. because it's the state statute. So. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm saying it's a, yeah. You know what I'm saying. And we have town water town space, right. so it's not a it's not yeah. a it's yeah. not an option. Well previously we could have said townhouses two party spots the way it is. We used to be able to do that. Well we can't anymore. Thank nope. you, Montpelier. There you go. Mm -hmm. Montpelier's up and out again. That's well it made it easy yeah. for the planning commission. We haven't even gotten to the regular meeting yet. <laughs> I know. But fortunately, you're the one that made me come early. I know. Fortunately, we had a downtown where some people live without a car. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Hey, listen to Heather. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, I, I was just trying to show that um, we can have Parking can be one of the single biggest barriers to building housing just because it can be so expensive to build uh, parking and, you know, depending on where you are, whether it's surface parking or whether it's structured parking, it can cost, uh, God, this was a couple of years ago, it was up to $50,000 per parking space. So what that does to affordability can be really, really brutal. Um, so a, a project can go from being something that pencils to something that absolutely doesn't and would be a loss for a developer to do and obviously developers do this as an investment so well certainly i'm not saying that you know parking is always going to be easy for everyone there is a rationale behind why the state yeah, decided it, to make that change but there is no rationale how is there a rationale there excuse me heather but <laughs> you're, you're you're developing something that's creating this number of parking needs and just because you as a developer get to say, no, I got three, it's all I need. You know, that doesn't help the municipality or the landowners have to deal with the excess parking. So it's not, I don't feel sorry for the developers, but it costs 50 grand for you to put parking in to develop your development that you're going to make a million dollars on. You know, figure it out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, they do, but they pass the cost of the parking on to the people who live in the apartments. And so that's what keeps it from being affordable. 
So well, yeah, that that's what leads to us having thank, a permit. Thank you. I got it. I got it. I'm on it. There's a lot of one car yes. families. I there. should have worked in there for two hours tonight. Or zero. I paid for that affordable housing. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm frustrated with the whole process. It's just one piece of it. it continues to go south. Thank you, Heather. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, she did a fine job, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. You did a great job, by the way. I'll take that as I can do with you. No, I, I entirely understand. I and there are a lot of communities that are struggling with the same thing, so I understand. Thank you very much. So, shall I jump off or stay on for? Uh, I'm, I'm okay with you jumping off, Heather. Does yes. anyone in the room have any more questions for Heather? Uh, no, I don't have a question, but I would just make an observation on what Danny was saying. On my street, their quarter have very small lots, really. <coughs> and you're going to allow one parking space, uh, I don't know what percentage, probably 50, 60% of the people that live there will park on the street. And this street where I live is one of the most congested, dangerous streets in the whole town. So I agree with Dan, yes. All right. Call your legislator. Yes, that's, that's, it. that's the Thank answer. You. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. I'm going to log out, okay? Yep. Thank you. I will talk to you later, Heather. Thank you so All much. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Kristen. Hi. I don't have to stand there. <laughs> what? So, I have to sit down? Did, no, I have to uh, give you a second. Do you want to tell us anything about flood changes? Because there are a lot of those. Um, there are a lot of those. Um, I want to dispel a myth. I, Obi said to me, we're making it harder in the flood plain. Yeah, you did. And I said, no, that's not the point of this. So <laughs> after the, no, are you laughing at me? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> laughing with you. No. Yeah, we're laughing so, with you. So basically, when we started doing all the repairs from last summer, we realized that we had put like bridges and culverts in the conditional use category at the recommendation of the um, uh, consultant at the time. They can be in the permitted section. It was absolutely, we had to take up the removal of the East Street Bridge, had to go East Main Street Bridge, had to go to the DRB, because we didn't have a caveat for removal of a bridge as an exemption. So most, a lot of the changes that we're proposing are actually making it easier to do the permitting. So moving the bridges and culverts to permitted uses, which were conditional use, moving channel management to permitted uses, which is currently a conditional use, Adding footbridges to permitted uses, we had to do a conditional use here on that. Adding river and flood framing permits to projects to permitted and conditional use if it's in a floodway. Currently, we don't talk about it. And right now, we only say you can have fill in the floodplain if it's for a house. We're adding primary access to that because there are times when someone needs a little extra fill in their driveway so that they can access their house. So. Um, we're, we, we are, here is the proposal that would be harder. Prohibit all new residential and non-residential structures, including the small accessory structures on the floodway. That's where the water can rise eight feet in 10 minutes. So, okay. sorry, that was floodway or flood? Floodway, okay, that's different. You. That is a selected small grouping of the town. That's not to say that if they have a house or an accessory structure, they have to remove it. Mm -hmm. It just says that if they want to put a new one in, they can't. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, prohibit natural burial grounds and cemeteries from the floodplain. I don't know if I have to really go into why we shouldn't have that in the floodplain, um, but I can. Add the word facility to storage in the prohibited use. We just said storage. It really is not like storage of someone's, uh, like a pile of, of debris that needs to get worked with, but rather a facility. The storage facilities are really what we're focusing on, and we need to make clarification of that. Um, exempting interior improvement and repairs to existing buildings under $500. I did have some applicants, some permits that came in that were for $500. This no exemption currently is in place. We can't exempt interior permits, unfortunately. That is not an option given to us by FEMA and the state of Vermont's language. A lot of the language we had to use is given to us in a model bylaw. But the um, 
we can, there is flexibility within that, and one of them is to give the $500 exemption. Yeah. Can I ask a question about that one? Sure. Is, it, is that the maximum dollar that I, can, that I can exempt? Yes. Unfortunately. Believe me, I would have gone higher. Yeah, you don't have 500 bucks. I know, but I did. I got two or three $500 ones. Brandon would go to uh, DRB, is that correct? You know, it depends on where it is. Okay. So if they are, um, so it, there's a lot of nuances to when they have interior. The only time that they have to go to the DRB is if they are in the floodway, everything that they do inside has to go to the DRB. So civic standard, if they want to change things inside, like put in new cabinets, they're supposed to go to the DRB first. Whoa. Um, the, uh, yeah, don't ask how I Real estate is values are And then, um, if it's early. a substantial, if it's a substantial improvement over 50%, then it goes to the DOV no matter where it is. Um, the need to exempt, the, we needed to exempt maintenance on roads, bridges, and stormwater drainage. Right now we only exempt roads. Um, exempting routine maintenance to an existing building. There's a definition to that. That's something that some people have had to do permits on. Exempting stream bank stabilization and abutment work. The other suggestion is to make it more stringent, which is right now we say that things have to be at base flood elevation. They really should be at design flood elevation, which is two feet above. And that is because of the way the patterns are working. People are not, they're still flooding if they're at base flood elevation. If you've seen Lisa Furlins down on Route 14, the one that was elevated after last year's flood, that's three feet above base flood elevation. She did not flood this last time. Um, the other standard that we wanted to change was right now critical facilities are, are, they are not supposed to be in the floodplain, but if they are to be substantially improved, they have to have the lowest floor, including the basement, elevated or dry flood proofed at least one foot above the 500 year flame or three feet above the base flood elevation, whichever is higher. And that is to deal with, in particular, the um, fire station and the wastewater treatment plant facility. Is the base flood elevation going to be changing? There are some places that are going to be changing. Um, the maps are coming, theoretically, in two years. Uh, we got the working maps, which unfortunately I can't give out to the public yet. Um, draft maps were supposed to come a year, um, a year later, and then a year after that, we were supposed to have our full brand new maps. However, because we're in the Moyle, part of our town is in the middle of the Moyle Basin. They have put a hold on that section because there are mistakes, according to ANR, found mistakes in Johnson. They did not find the same mistakes in Hardwick, but they are asking uh, FEMA to go back and use the models they used, but with the newer um, flood models, flood damage and flood amounts. So looking at using the last five, the last two years versus uh, they use they didn't they use only up to like 2015 and something to that so they haven't had five of our worst floods for the most part not been in there so um, so we don't know when they're coming at this point we started this process thinking they were coming within two years it now sounds like they're going to be on hold as far as our town currently there are some places with different flood base flood elevations but there are other places that have stayed the same so. I mean, I can't, I can't give you a definitive answer until we see those maps again. Questions, Danny? <laughs> I didn't. So I'm glad I don't own no real estate and the flood anywhere near the water. Can I just ask a process question, Kristen? So this is the, um, we're, this is the public hearing, obviously tonight, and we're getting all this information, and then um, what's the process after that, and then how, and then the second question would be, how are we communicating with people whose properties or parcels might be changing under the bylaws? So, um, that's a two part. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the way it works is, we would, I have it, it is on the agenda for you guys to make a decision tonight. Uh, hopefully you will. This has been, I sent out mailers to everybody in the, the, with the tax cards, with the tax bills, and I waited, we waited extra months to do this process so that we could get more information out to people. I will tell you that after I sent this out, I had multiple people who came in to ask questions, especially people in the floodplains. Um, the floodplain people, the people who are going to be impacted by the floodplain are 
are going to receive letters as soon as the working maps or the draft maps are available, where they'll get copies of what's going on in the floodplains. I've already started reaching out to people when they move to town if they're in the floodplain and saying, this is what, welcome to Hardwick, this is what it means, you live in the floodplain, this is what it means. I'm not always a warm fuzzy, but I try. I'm trying to give people information as best, as best I can. We're also, I, I mean, they, they get multiple letters, they get talked to about everything. I, for the most part, unfortunately, I think I've talked to everybody who lives in the Flint, at least once in the last couple months, um, and others more than once. Um, I know there's people who aren't happy with the interior, interior uh, uh, permits. Those have been there since. They were not changed this last go around, they were changed before that. So they've been in place for at least 10 years. They just have not been enforced because it's not something that we as a town have done. We even had, we even had a town manager told people that they didn't have to do it inside. If it's inside, they don't have to do it. We do have to do it. We are, if we want to stay in the NFIP and continue to receive money at public assistance after this was, we have to do the, the zoning the way it gets required. And that's unfortunately part of it. That's why I asked for you guys to waive the fees because that's adding insult to injury that you have to get a permit for your repairs and you have to pay a fee for that. At least in my mind. So thank you for that. Well, most of these changes are better. That was the whole. I mean, a lot of times I'm scrambling to get the right permits in place for our projects with bridges, etc.
So that will be the basis of it. And I, uh, I brought the budget and, and any more details you want with me. But I want to point out that in the, uh, and I remarked it in the handout that I gave, but we had originally sought 112,587. And as luck would have it, one of the formulas included the year 2025. So that amount was off by $2,025, which I corrected to uh, $114,612. Just how things happen with Excel, what can I say? Uh, and uh, so that would be the gist of it. If there's any questions, happy to answer them. I just have a couple little questions. Um, the, uh, if, I'm sorry, remind me of your name. My name is George McWilliams. George, sorry. thank you, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Um, so there's currently 14 adults, uh, so 14 Vermonters receiving services, 25 employees and volunteers. Is that the max, currently the max capacity or is there also, like, is there room within your... We, we are licensed to add up to 18 people. With this new residence, it'll be 17. Okay. So that would leave one more <coughs> under the current licensing. And we actually also have permission to build one more dwelling. But if we did that, we'd probably have to seek licensing for, for some more beds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this would enable you to have 17 in total? 17 in total, correct. That's what we're shooting for. Who does the licensing? Um, it's, it's through Dale, through, through, okay. through the Department of Developmental yeah. Services. Aging Independent Living. Okay. Yeah. Which is a state level? Yeah, yeah. yeah. state level. Yeah. Yes. And then the only other question, and I don't know if you know this, Jordan, is and if I haven't been on the board during any other time that Harpy has built something, if there's a precedence for any kind of other um, support from Hardwick for. I, I don't think there has been. Okay. You aware of that? Not that I can remember. Uh, well, we The community uh, center? There may have been uh, yeah. public support for it. Okay. Maybe so. Maybe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems as though we, we've, you think so? we've discussed what's going on. I think that might have been around permitting the building. Yes, I think it you're right. It probably was around the permit right. of the building. Because yeah. it's a large building. Because they did their own fundraising for yeah. Right, because yes. it wasn't a funding thing. I don't remember, but I remember talking about the building. Mm -hmm. And similarly, with this new residence, we're doing fundraising for the residence itself. Okay. And this is the operational request for the grant. Um, and then my only other question, sorry, I'm going to get a question, sir, um, is, um, so there, in the budget, which is super clear, there's this VCDP grant administration percentage. Is that for the VCDP? But no, that or is that, that for? So we, we took advice. Uh, from Nathan Cleveland, I think, and because there will be administrative costs to administer the grant, mm -hmm. and I believe it was he that suggested we put in about 8%. Okay. And that includes monies that will go to the town for the costs that are incurred for the work that you're doing. Okay. Right, that's the total, that's the cost to administer the grant. Yes. To whoever it may be. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like posting, yeah. posting the, you know, the warning for this hearing, for example, <coughs> all, all those costs that they add up. Yeah. Yeah. It's very smart to add that into your budget. Yes. Yeah. It actually Double does it. cost money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I, I hope it doesn't cost that much, but that's what we were advised. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. You'd be okay. surprised. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's probably a valid percentage. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions for George, or does anybody else want to speak? Yes. Can you state your name, please? I'm Judith Jackson. I live in Irisburg, and I'm the mother of Annie, who has oh, lived yeah. at Heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> who has lived at Heartbeat since um, 2010, oh, so wow. 29 for 15 years. And Heartbeat changed Annie's life and changed life for our whole family. I, I want to talk about a really important connection between Heartbeat and the town of Hardwick. This is a literal connection. I'm talking about town farm road. Among the requirements of the federal government that provides Medicaid funding for people like Annie to pay or for other friends, and many, almost everyone at Carpenter, is 
that there is a close connection to the wider community. They don't want people with disabilities living in isolated, living isolated from the rest of the community. And so our connection to Heartbeat is really vitally important to Heartbeat, really for our survival. And every time I drive up Town Farm Road, I say thank you to the Hardwick Road Crew that keeps that road in condition that all year long, sometimes this year, for example, pretty difficult um, for road crews all over Vermont there in the winter. So when I go to visit Annie or when Annie wants to go out to eat mm. <laughs> or he wants to come, go and work at her job at Jasper Hill, we know we're going to be able to get back and forth. So please convey my thanks to the Hardwick Road Crew for that. Is that you? No, he, he can convey the thanks. <laughs> we have and also, I want to give thanks for the support, not just to the friends of our feet, also to the relationships we have there. It's important. We have connections, family connections, and everybody inside. If you do make a that would be great. If you had people coming in and, being, and having trial visits coming in and such, then I think it would be a great gift for them to have a place that they could to call home. Mm. Three people might not sound like much, especially when you know from a recent survey in 2023, there were probably 600 and more than, there were 600 people with disabilities in Vermont who need support, a supported, good place to live. Three people might sound like a drop in the bucket, but that's three people and three families whose lives are going to change because they can come and live, live and work and participate in, in Heartbeat. So we're very thankful to the town of Heartbeat for your support. Maybe just to talk about the wider community, we have um, our we call our people friends and employed at uh, the Buffalo Mountain Market, High Mowing Seeds, Jasper Hill Cheese, the Farmstead Brewery, and the Jubilee Library as well. <laughs> so, uh, and I had one question for you. I, had, I had just looked on the agenda and see that we're on at 6.30 for, for a vote of some kind, or whether you're going to support this. Um, should I stay for that, or do you think we're good? I don't think you need to stay. I think you're very good. That's just a form that's needed for the application. Okay. Yeah, it's I, just. I wasn't sure. I was, I'm, I'm familiar. Sure. So we didn't leave, and then it's like, oh, we have a project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to sign one of those for every application. So we've done it a couple times before. It's basically just saying that the town has certain policies and procedures in place, and it's just really needed for the application. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thank you. And thanks for speaking up, everyone. Um, and with that, I'm going to adjourn our um, our public hearing and give us five minutes before our actual select board meeting. So thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. Hey, Opie. All that thought so we get to okay. our report. It's about six o'clock. And uh, so it's about six o'clock on Thursday, September 5th. And we're all here for the long-awaited select board meeting, first one in September. Um, welcome, everyone. So first thing is uh, select the uh, select board call in the order, which I just am doing. Then set adjust agenda. Do we have any changes? I'd like to amend item number two to include a renewal consideration for the Clean Cannabis Company for an indoor cultivator tier three cannabis license renewal. So we'll just do two of them instead yep. of one. Okay. Got it. Anybody have anything else? Oh, oh, oh your executive session to contracts. Contracts. To sessions. Not include anyone except for the subway. All right. Or do we want to include Opie? You're making the suggestion. Well, let's include Opie. Maybe we can wrap it up. <laughs>
Right. That's what I'm Executive saying. session. Do I have to be involved? <coughs> you yes. do not. Okay. You should be. Okay. You're, you don't want to be in charge, do you? Yeah. <laughs> if, if we're here, you have to be here. Executive session, we're going to add that after the old business to discuss contracts. One BSA 313. Thank yep. you. That's one. Okay. Um, all right. So we have uh, an addition to item two, and we're adding an executive session. A motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next communication from the audience. Anyone here to talk about something that's not on our agenda tonight? Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike Tavares. I'm here to talk about uh, the flooded road up on Old Town Road. Uh, I sent, actually, Casey, I think, shared with you guys pictures of yep. the road up there. And uh, presently, I, I spent probably a week and a half getting materials I could get to be able to drive a single vehicle through there. <clears throat> but it's, it's really a lot of damage. Uh, where the waterways cross, things are pretty much washed out all around. Uh, it's gonna take, I think, a lot of rock and material to be able to put things back in place that'll stay there. And my biggest concern is we're in September, and I know last year, you guys got it fixed earlier. I heard some people got their hands slapped for doing that because, well, that's what hurts the great one. Okay. Okay. So basically, what, I, what I'm asking is, I, I need to be able to get fuel trucks in there. I need to be able to get my big trailers and stuff in there. I usually have a guy that comes and he actually, I pay him to, he bush hogs both sides of the road all the way to top of my mountain and back. So all those trees don't fall in the road. Uh, right now, he can't get in there unless we do some work to widen that up a little bit. So, is there any timeline on when we can get, I mean, a couple loads of material and a little bit of rock on the beginning when we go in so we can get some bigger rigs in there and we could put it together? Class 4 row, road, patent road. Same, same thing. Same deal. It's a patent class 4. Right. Class 4. So, Mike, why do you think we should fix that road up so you can... Do business up there. Why, why well, we well up? for one, I, why I've, got, I've got a home up there, a residency. Okay. I've got a business up there. Yep. I've been there for over 15 years. Yep. And there's been three floods in 15 years. Irene, the town helped fix it. 2023, the town helped fix it. And now this year, just like all the towns, is anybody helping you guys in, in the problems you're having right now? Sounds like you've been pretty fortunate that we fixed it twice because it's not our obligation to fix something you built on top of a mountain. And well, it's, just, it's your it's obligation like, uh, to just, fix the culverts and the bridges. I went to the state and I got to it. Okay? This is true. And, okay, uh, and these I, are all failures of the culverts and the waterways. So, Nothing to do with my road or my buildings. Probably, absolutely. No one probably in this room that knows as much about class four bent roads as I do. I dealt with this stuff for 20 years as a, as a career. But the fact is, you did build all that stuff up there on that mountain. And yeah. you used a skidder road to get everything up there. It was not a highway. It was not a, a class three town What's road. a class four? Isn't it considered a highway, Dan? Okay. No. We're not, I'm not gonna gonna it. It. It's a highway. It's in a different category. It's a pet and road. it's not so cut. It's not supported by any. I don't want to give the young man who gets cold so for building my mountain. No, no. Is, is there a compromise we can make here? Is well, the what, compromise so. is let's work together to fix the road. <laughs> okay, not scold me because I built them something on my property. And you're, you're the only one up there. There's no other. Right now, there. I have a house up there, mm -hmm. and I've got a business up there. Okay, what's your business? It's uh, the Sugar Sugarworks, the Maple Sugar. I want 265 acre bush up there. Mm -hmm. And I have a 2400 taps, a 48 by 28 facility, and... And so what are you then requesting from us to, I am to, get, to get it working? Just like I think anybody in business, when things go bad, sure. some assistance to put this road back together. I've maintained it for 10 years. I, I snow blow it. I do all the work on the roads. Right. I bush hog it. I maintain everything. Nobody bothers you guys for anything. But when something this catastrophic help happens, I'm just asking for a little help to put it back together. 
And so in the beginning, you started by asking for a few loads of fill. Yep. Is that what you're asking for? That, that's what I'm asking. I, I don't have an excavator to be able to, when you first come in, if you looked at those pictures, the very first element, it needs some just, sort of a... Just off Mac Bill or Just if you Nichols pull in. Road. Mac, Mac Bill Road. Mac Bill Road, right off Mac Bill yeah. Road. That, that culvert was washed out so bad, I put material over the top to get in, mm -hmm. but both sides, I mean, there's this much sticking out with nothing on it, that side, mm -hmm. probably some, a rock, like big rocks or slab on both sides to cover, so when bigger rigs come through, they're not just gonna go through all the sides. And I don't have the resource to do that. From there, once we fix that, there's one other spot in the middle where the water, the ditching never took place, we talked about it. And I'm gonna look at getting an excavator and ditching. Maybe some help on some of the culverts would be nice, because that's really supposed to be part of what you guys are doing, right? If I get a machine and I'm willing to put them in, dig it, help fix the road, I got a dozer, but I need help with culverts and I need help with materials. So, I mean, I think it sounds like a reasonable request, honestly. So what about other, other people that are on class four roads making that request? If somebody comes, others. Okay. Can I just, can I just, mm -hmm. so I told, thank you for your giving us pictures and for talking about the state and Danny, obviously your experience, I think it would make more sense. I mean, at this point, the road's still not fixed. We're not, even if we said yes tonight, we're not gonna get to it before the next select board meeting, probably, based on everything we have to do. Can I ask that we actually make this an agenda item for the next select board meeting, have Tom here talk to us about it, about what it would actually take, have a chance to look at what the state's telling us about class four. I don't feel comfortable making a decision without seeing any of the laws around it. So I think, and sure. also seeing what, like, Sure. So maybe if we can come up with here, here are the three things I need help with. I need ten yards of fill or whatever. Yep. Just so that yep. way we can make it like an official sure. action. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing that I know you guys had done before is that uh, Patton's Road up Buffalo Mountain. Mm -hmm. Right. There was some understandings. That's a trail, actually. Just to be clear. I, can we rename my trail? <laughs> yes. And then we would no longer be responsible for. Can we do that? Bridges. Can we wait? We, we, we can. That, let's do that. And, <laughs> and, and the funny, the, I just add to the, add to the trail thing. Are they responsible for it anyway? Nope. But with trails, the town, the state will help fix trails. Federal really? government will too. Yeah. So class four road is, it does not receive any federal aid, so I can't put it in a FEMA project. And another ironic piece of information too is I'm going for a B-gap loan to fix like I have like a landslide on the sugar house and stuff like that. And they're giving these loans out. It's not a loan, it's a grant, 30% grant. And uh, whatever the cost is to help you repair from the floods. And I told them about my road. And they said, he was all like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I said, it's right at the end of class, class four. We can't touch it. And I said, why not? I went to two different groups of people and they sent me back letters that class fours are controlled by the municipality. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that make the decisions to do things. If it wasn't a class four road and they threw it up, we'd fix it for you. Well, but we'll put long, that on the agenda. Yeah, we do have to put it on the agenda because throwing it up is different than changing it to a trail. Yeah, yeah. Open to any, any way you guys think the right way to do it. Okay. But Mike, it'd be super helpful if you clarify it. I mean, it's great to have the photos, but if for the next meeting, if you clarified exactly what you're asking, like maybe not by the yard, but like sure. an excavator for two days and fill, yeah. I, I think it would just be helpful to, to know like exactly what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah, the, I'll, the scope I'll, of the scope. I'll of the have time to get up there and look at the culverts before the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And just for, just so everybody's aware too, and I know you guys probably saw it on there, but there is. The town electric highway department owns 65 acres on the end of that right of way. Mm -hmm. That just me. Article Electric, 65 acres. Charlie Bolt owns land on that right of way. Steve Sampson owns land on that right of way. And right off the bridge, Debbie Howard has on the cross from the first bridge property out there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Mike Demers up there. There's five different people. Yep. Great. Could have asked a question. Yes. Uh, did you I Charlie? Uh, Charlie Hope, yeah. Thank you. Um, as I understand it, in a very simple 
uh, explanation, the town is responsible. If the culvert's gone, then the town's going to do something about it. We, we have to do our due diligence with erosion control. Yeah. So, so is that like preventative maintenance? That may mean no. there's no culvert. I'm sorry? It may mean there's no culvert. Well, that's we're what I'm thinking, you know, but it's going to be a lot water. cheaper. We're responsible for the water, not for a road. We don't have to make it a travel road. You, you're not responsible, responsible for, the, for the, cold. the erosion. No, we're responsible for the erosion that's caused by runoff. That's what we're responsible for. A road. It doesn't mean we have to build someone a road. That's not what we're responsible for. We're not responsible for providing low, low clearance vehicle travel on that road. We're not responsible for that. We're responsible for whatever environmental erosion would take place. Environmental erosion. Yeah, you, 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 we're not responsible. We don't have to make it so you can drive your Corvette down there. But we do have to make it so it won't wash into the road. You, you, you would put a 4x4 four four no. with dual wheels. <laughs> That's what the responsibility is. Okay. The responsibility is to the, to the water, not to the... No, I understand what you're saying. Not to the vehicle. All right, so okay. next time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. I appreciate yeah. the pictures. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Yep. All right. Next, uh, where are we? Communication. Oh, wait. Uh, next, select the board to approve minutes from last time, which was August 15th. Motion to approve. Whoa, did you take care of those minutes there? I fixed it, the 595, 595. And the same with the total predicted costs. Where are you? Um, uh, so at 634 to 642, item 7 on the agenda, um, there was in the original minutes that the $5.95 was $595. And I believe the we didn't say the total predicted cost would be between 45 and 50. We said that we had spent between, currently had spent between 45, estimated that we had spent 45 or 50 with the drilling and everything. So this is corrected or it's not? This is not. It says the total predicted cost will be between 45 and 50. We said the total expended cost to date, we estimate to be 45 to 50. And this says 40 anyway. 40 to 40 and 50. Well, I'm not sure what that means. So we want to change predicted. So that means, and I just predicted. noticed that says predicated, not predicted. They didn't pick <laughs> it up until <laughs> Yes. Oh, but you know what I'm saying? When we were talking, yeah. Opie and I were talking about that, we were talking, we were trying to calculate what we spent between the blasting and mm -hmm. the excavator and stuff. We weren't talking about what the high limit might be. So. And is that 595 correct that's or correct. incorrect? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So we know, you know now, Casey, what needs um, to be. Predict so what do you want? What we're you striking that and it's the, the total estimated total cost. The estimated cost to date was yes. forty to 50000 would be fine because that's what we were talking about. <clears throat> That's what you get for me actually reading the minutes. Uh, I saw a few Did this you get? I was saying, yeah, Damn it's really it helpful did. if this can be communicated prior, like to yeah. the thing. That's uh, why we usually try I to. I communicated it to the town manager. You did communicate the five ninety five, but you did communicate both to the town manager. Yeah, but it works better because I do well, it all the time. I didn't want to overstep to my boundaries. I was trying not to micromanage. You just send it to the person who like so. Yeah, you the I got it. Like whoever sends you. them out, me or Amanda, just respond with to your that. great. Okay, just, well, that's the best way to get it taken care of. making a motion that we approve the minutes with that change. As amended, yep. Yeah. yeah. It's a clear indication that I only listen to what half a day. <laughs> so that's that's, that's a pretty high proportion. It's more than most of us. You get a second? Yes, yeah, second. So I saw a couple typos type in, but probably not worth correcting. So um, all in favor of approving minutes as amended, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm abstaining. Uh, one abstention. So minutes oh, pass. Next is select board. Oh, sorry. Next is town manager report. By town manager. Okay, so uh, we conducted interviews for 
uh, architects and engineering consultants for the MTAP grant with NBDA for the relocation of the fire department and the development of Creamery Road. Um, Eric was involved in uh, the interviews along with our community development coordinator, uh, a representative from Hardwick Rescue, Mary Hall, and um, Allison Lowe from NBDA. We had four, four firms uh, with their partners uh, in the interviews. I, th I think they went well. Um, we had some conversations regarding who our thought, who our picks would be. Um, we're going to tally up some scoring sheets and communicate this, and hopefully choose a consultant firm group by middle of next week. I think that's the plan. Um, we learned a lot, um, and it was good to have Hardwick Rescue uh, have a seat at the table. So that project is going. Um, well, but there's a lot of work to be done. Can I add that? Yes. Um, that I think it's very encouraging. We have grant funding to pay for this, um, these services, yeah. and we have proposals, multiple proposals, mm -hmm. that will be close to our um, target budget that will provide, we think, an excellent um, product. So yeah. It's very ba encouraging. Basically, we'll end with a solid plan for programming and feasibility and uh, some conceptual drawings to go to, go to the public and to our funders, to, to funders. But um, we'll still have to engage with a, a, an architect and engineer to develop the four construction plans. But we hope it's the same person um, to make it easier. A uh, contract with Mumley Engineering was signed um, I think it was last week um, for Herbert Farms Fox Culvert Engineering. So we chose them. So that's signed and he should be beginning the work. Um, I sent out the contract for uh, New England and consulting engineers for the EWP project. I haven't, I need to nudge him because I haven't heard back from him. Uh, our town lawyer is drafting up. Uh, the quick claim deed for the Perrys for, um, for, for JP and Sons LLC, Properties LLC for the Cary Road property. So that um, the 30 day um, window expired and then I engaged with the attorney because I didn't want to incur any legal costs before that appealing period. So that's why there's a little bit of a delay there. But I've been in touch with the Perrys, and we were providing information back and forth. So hopefully that will uh, move right along as fast as anything does. And then I received uh, an option letter from Vermont Huts that was uh, reviewed by our attorney um, and sent back. And I've sent it back to Vermont Huts with our edits, um, waiting to hear back from them. Um, FEMA projects are moving along. We've gotten most of the smaller projects obligated. There's still some sticky wickets with the Cary Road box culvert um, that popped up today and Fisher Folly uh, for permanent work projects. And we should have the, the two big road projects obligated with some mitigation fund, funds mixed in there for um, headers and wing walls for some culverts, some mitigation work for some culverts. Um, and then there's, I think, another 70000 in that mitigation project for materials that we can uh, ultimately pay ourselves to provide from our pit. So this is where that mm -hmm. having those materials readily available, we can pay ourselves to provide. So that's going to work out pretty good. Um, so there's, I just want to kind of point out, oh, go ahead. So what I, along the lines of the pit, when you say pay ourselves, that means those costs still have to be incurred by the pit, by the operation of the pit. Everyone's, sure. um, yeah. I have to keep your mind, 
yeah, we're going to use right. those to provide to to right. to, to have materials. Just, just making sure. Yeah, and we'll on the same we'll page. spell yeah. these things out in the budget now that we ha that we own the pit and we're using it. Right, we'll have a we'll, we have some. Yeah, we have to figure that out. We have put, to yeah. put yeah. it on paper yeah. for people like, yeah, like so they for, can see. For example, we we have to um, like with the sand. Mm -hmm. we, we we used we sold sold sand to the wastewater plant project right. for the lagoon. So there's a credit there. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. So I didn't understand your comment, Daniel. Sorry. So when we pay ourselves, mm -hmm. so we're, we're paying ourselves, we're paying the money into the ground production. Upper production fund, yeah. not into the general fund. So when you say pay ourselves, we're paying... Well... Yeah, now you know well about it. I don't know. I would ask Casey well, if she manages that in a separate well, fund. Another, well, well, I don't so care unless if it's a separate fund because I, I can do that. I can, I can do, I can do the separate fund part. But you can't take the money that if, if we get twenty five thousand dollars FEMA money for material, mm -hmm. that money has to go towards twenty five thousand dollars in manufacturing material. Mate it materials and transportation. That's it's all included. That's just. That's yeah. fine, but I'm yeah. just saying that that's. I'm confused because money is fungible, meaning. Whoa. Meaning. It's a mushroom. <laughs> it, I don't know. Meaning that so. So imagine we're buying the the gravel. Yep. So then we run gravel. Casey gets an invoice for the gravel. She pays it out of our out of the fund. budget. Yeah. And then later, FEMA, re like years later, FEMA reimburses that, goes back into the fund. Goes into there the general this, fund, but yeah. into the budget. There isn't, as far as I'm aware, there isn't a special there needs uh, to be. gravel pit fund budget. Yes, there is. And that's what I'm saying. we just created one by that $75,000. Yeah. That's what I... It's a really a line item. Yeah, it's more yeah. of a line that's item fine. budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then, all right. There the line item is fine. fine. Whatever. It's, yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Is if, I mean, with the material, the money we get for the material we use, any any money you want to go that's back. That's not budgeted money. So we budget thirty thousand. We budget budgeted thirty thousand for gravel this year, right? So that means there's thirty thousand dollars for us to pay to crush gravel. Mm -hmm. But when that gravel's gone, we don't have any more money in there. Thirty thousand is gone. Mm -hmm. If we have thirty thousand dollars in there and we crush ledge and we use the ledge for a fever project. Then we put that thirty thousand dollars back into the fund. Correct. That's what I we, said. When right. we get it, yeah. But there's a, so there's a difference. It, it, it comes with in the it but comes it, with the project. So are you envisioning that we would set up a separate fund for the I don't gravel care pit? How you keep track of that because typically that would just run through the general fund, mm -hmm. and we could certainly, if you're looking for tracking purposes, you could set up an expense line gravel pit operation, yeah, that's, that's and you fine. could set up I a revenue line yeah, gravel yeah. pit income. But <laughs> yeah, how you put the yeah. numbers together? That's, but you need to keep track of the numbers. I understand it's all our money. We definitely have projects. to keep track of the numbers because we have to report all that I'm stuff to people. Nervous as hell right. that it isn't going to happen, and all of a sudden you're going to have seventy thousand dollars worth of crushing, and where, where, where's where to go? But it went all over the roads, and we didn't. Just some telling me. Don't worry okay. about that stuff. We'll, we'll okay. It'll be good. I feel like we're all right. Good. It'll be okay. Yeah. I shouldn't even brought it up. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, I don't have to come to these meetings if you don't want me here. No, you're fine. No, you're decided. elected to come to these meetings. I, I, I like that you're here, Danny. Don't be, um, I, we can handle it. Um, so, there's an issue that cropped up today that I'm trying to figure out. Um, I gotta consult with our road foreman. But if you notice, the, before the paving, we had the ditch along the LVRT. Yeah. And the water ran out and came down into this catch basin. So there's a culvert halfway up the LVRT, um, and uh, there's three projects that I've asked VTrans to look at, and they are too busy. So they've given us permission to do some work. Um, so I had the guys do an exploratory dig today next to the culvert that is always drained down in between the Masonic Temple and the red place next door, underground, there's a drain. 
So we dug it up today and it's likely I, we have to try to do a little bit more discovery, but it, it's likely that it wasn't separated from the stormwater system. So it's going right in the sewer. Um, hmm. Yeah, so that could become a problem. Uh, so we didn't clean out the culvert, but I don't want to keep running down the road. drain water down or ditch water down our new pavement into the storm drain. And I don't think it's appropriate to put another catch basin in North Main Street when we have the infrastructure already there. So worst case scenario is we'd have to dig that up and pipe it into the storm drain. Is there a storm drain reasonably close to where it comes out? Now? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But the, the pipe, if it does go into the sewer, um, and if there's no other houses connected to it, it should be rather um, straightforward. Straightforward and straight, but we still have to dig up the new. We potentially have to dig up the new sidewalk. Yeah. So, just letting you know that that's going on. But we're not digging up the new pavement yet. I don't want to dig up this next year. It's not even funny. I think by the, I, I give us through October. Yeah. Uh, and so there's that. Um, and then Aware uh, requested a spot in the Peace Park for their bench that they um, that they dedicated to um, Paulette um, mm -hmm. Colburn Brochu for um, and I'd like to grant their request. Mm -hmm. There's a wooden bench along the concrete wall that I think we can replace. It's just like I don't. It's there's no dedication platform. There are a lot of benches in that park that are dedicated. Did all those people ask to put them in there? I have no idea. No, that was it doesn't. Me. I don't don't believe that I've ever we've ever had uh, somebody come. So sh should so I just put it in there? I make a motion that you do that. Okay. Um, I just was going to give them permission to replace the wooden bench that's in yeah. there. So the select board, can we say the select board generally agrees that's a good idea? Well, I, I'd, I'd like to, yeah. There's some work that needs to be done in the park anyway. I mean, I think this bench is fine, but mm -hmm. I think that there are some benches. There's a lot of benches in that park. There's like more benches than there are. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll fuss about that later. Okay. So just want to let you know. So I'm just going to tell them they can put it in there. Great. Yeah. Thanks. And that's about it. There's a lot more, but I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to. Oh, Kristen wants to add to your report. Oh wait, there there is. A meeting. The what? The 16th. Oh, the meeting on the 16th for uh, for the community up at Hazen. Uh, it's a panel discussion. There's going to be. Um, it's going to be fun. So, <laughs> what are we discussing? There's what a flyer there. Go ahead. You can next. Six to seven thirty. What are we discussing? It's um, neighbors to neighbors is uh, hosting it to talk about flood response. What's the flood recovery? Uh, some ideas. It'd be a flood. It's for the local emergency management yeah. planning stuff. Yeah. And who's on the panel? They're doing a lot of good work. Um, I think they've asked um, myself and Opie and Mike Henry and do we know who else? It's not anyone from the state or anything Maybe like that. It's all local. Maybe Helen. It'll be fun. <laughs> all right. Um, I just have one question. We've got, um, well, I can bring up a new little business. I'll save it for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Did you want to show that map? Oh, yeah. oh, what'd you do? Get chilly? Have to go inside? <laughs> Here's a nice map that we got from our Borac grant. Ooh. That's going to be hung up in several locations in town. I and think the, on those eight. kiosks for the trailheads someday. And then there, it's up on Main Street in the. In the oh, yeah, in the Nice. Nice. Good work. Yeah. All right. I'm going to move us along. Next is the Harvard Police Department. Before we have Mike Henry on the uh, interweb over here. Yeah, try to move closer because this keeps got out on me, but I think I can do it in my mind. Um, so the personnel issues, uh, we had uh, one level two officer uh, who was still in training, uh, and things just weren't working out, so we had to let them go. Uh, we still 
have uh, Officer Fresh. She is in her fifth week at the uh, level three training at the academy. Uh, things are going very well for her at this point. Um, we have uh, we completed all the process with uh, Joe Donna, and he's set to go to level two academy uh, next Monday. So everything else seems to be going well. But that's short. Joe Donna, like Joe Donna, I know. The Joe Donna, you know. Yeah. Cool. Well, did you miss that Huh? Yeah. Well, no, I think that's great. I didn't know I was even interested in it. Yeah, you've been in the process. It's, uh, you know, it's been almost three months now in the process getting ready for this. Yeah. So. Well, good deal. Yeah. Questions for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Um, I didn't cut. <laughs> no, you will. Next up is item one, select board to accept the amendments to the Hardy Unified Development Bylaws. We had a public hearing on this just preceding this meeting. I'd like to have a motion to accept the amendments presented uh, for the Hardy Unified Development Bylaws. Second. Any discussion? Uh, just thank you to Kristen Leahy and Heather Corrigan for pulling this together and the Planning Commission. Yep. Um, Am I missing anyone? And Tracy. Oh, and Tracy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, I just have one really quick process question. Ooh. Is this going to go into the town report for the town meeting? Like a, just a snapshot of what? I just been thinking of yeah. as another place to show people what the changes are. Sure. Or, just or, or it could be, yeah. Something. It could be one of those things out in the lobby, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, so we had a motion. Yeah, that's second. Second. Okay, so all in favor of approving the new bylaws, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Next, item two, select board to consider approving a cultivator tier one small business cannabis license renewal for uh, DCB LLC doing business as high altitude cannabis and, and a renewal for clean cannabis company. They're both renewals. Oh, yes. It should say license So moved. Second. You want to do them together? Yeah. Any discussion? Did you? Yes. Did you post the uh, survey? Oh, I think oh, I did actually. Be better. I have to I think I did. <laughs> the, they, we got a survey in our yeah. box for. Oh yeah. But the commission. I hope yeah. they all did it. I certainly I did mine. Oh, yeah. Well, I felt. Yeah. Sure you did. <laughs> and I yes, it. I did do it. It's me. If you want to talk, call me. Yeah. We'll talk. Didn't take long at all. All right. So we have a motion and a second. <coughs> um, all in favor of approving the renewals, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Next. I do. Item three is look forward to adopt M P one for uh, the M P one for the Mall Community Development Program grant for heartbeat life sharing grant application. We also had a public hearing about this immediately previous to this. The item. municipal policies and codes form M P one. We've Thank done this you. probably yeah. three or four times for other V C P for Yellow Barn for whatever it's just they require it with every grant yeah. application i'd like to make a motion that we do that please second oh tim oh. got it tim got it tim, tim gets a second no bite any uh yeah. more yeah. any discussion yeah. on that Glad to go. uh all in favor please say aye aye, aye. 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 so i appreciate the fact that uh, through this process yeah through this process uh i think that george yes. did a great job of uh, bring my awareness to the community you know, and the community's awareness to what actually takes place up there. I think they did a great job. Mm -hmm. and, and prior, it was kind of always not presented as well as. So. Well, he's he is the new guy, so to speak. He's yeah, no, but I mean, they did a good job. They came yeah. early. They introduced themselves. They came back. Uh -huh. They brought some people tonight. That's great to know that there's local folks that have really benefit from it. You know, mm -hmm. you hear. You hear somebody say, yeah, local folks, but when you see the local folks, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. uh, it's real. Yeah. That's all right. No, no, it's great. Good job, Thanks. George. You're on. Awesome. <laughs> all right, so that, all right. Thank you. Item four, select board discuss 41 brush street for sale. 
<laughs> so 41 Brush Street is in the buyout process. Um, it's in, um, it's still owned by the estate um, of the deceased resident. And it is in peril of falling in Long Water River. Mm -hmm. And I have requested assistance from my the grants manager for FEMA as to the path forward and to for reimbursement mm -hmm. um, but there's really no clear uh, answer uh, we've talked to Vermont emergency management uh, basically if we if we tear it down before the, the closing and before the buyout process we're likely not going to be reimbursed for our work for the demolition so it just puts us in a tough spot, um, puts me in a tough spot because I think that for the health and safety of the community and, and the environment, you know, there's a, I guess there's a half full oil tank in there. Can we put a, can we do the work and put a lean on it, on the estate? Sort of like is, we did isn't it a dangerous zone. building? Uh, well, it, we took the money out of the community development plan and bought it for Larry to clean the flood zone up. And basically took took that property as a as a as a lien. I mean, can we at least offer that to the state? I don't know if we can just take it and do it, but can we offer something like that? I mean, I, there's no value to in in the it's, state. It's, so it's fifty. Happen. So it costs us fifty five thousand dollars to take it down. We got a quote from the same guy that did the other. And that takes both of those buildings down, that garage yeah. and the. That's house. just the house. Oh. Just a house for now. So what happens if it falls in the one? Who, who's and who's I know what happens, but who's who's like who's, where's where's the liability going to fall? That would be the estate. The estate would be out of town. No, it'd be on the estate. And is it really? I mean, is it really liability? Like, were the motel owners liable when the motel went down the river? Well, we weren't. My my, my point is that the taxpayers of that are not very liable, so we should be making a decision. We're not liable. We're not liable. We're it's not, not liable, it's not but a, it's... It's no different than if my house falls in the river, are you guys going to make bail out? Depends on if you're in it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so one, of the, um, one of the issues... You know what I'm saying, yeah. But the, the environmental issues? impact is... So, I just... If, yeah. if you tell me to leave it, I'll leave it. Well, I don't want to leave it, but I don't want to spend $55,000 of taxpayers' money. You know, I don't um, either. Um, and that's so, so I'm no still I'm right. still waiting for some guidance. Uh, our our grants manager is going to call. Uh, we put it on uh, the the state's consultant today guide house to try to get some. But I think we're just going to be talking in circles. Yeah, I'm with sure. The so how? Can I just add that uh, I've heard from some residents that there is what they think to be trespassing in that building of teenagers and potentially uh, minors. So if we're to leave it, is there a way that we can make it less accessible for people to get in that building? So again, it's not a start. I know, I know it's not. If, if there were so many in there. Sherry brought a really good point. We I mean, have I, a dangerous I buildings missed. ordinance. Yeah. yeah. So I'll review that. I and that, I, and I, that I, becomes a lien on the But I don't know if the property. lien. So if a decision is not made tonight to do this, it doesn't happen this fall. That means just, that's. Oh, because of the contract. Yeah. Because the yeah. contractor has a brief window, they do yeah, another property. He's the only one. There. I mean, there's a lot. It's the October first. The water. October first is going to have to come across the water. The gravel. It's the water issue. October first is the cutoff. Being in the yeah, river. we can't go in the water after October first without having to go through a large park permitting process. So the house is in the river. The house is hanging out over there. Yeah, I understand that. So I, I think his plan. I think his plan would be to hold the. Support. I don't know what his plan is, but. I can tell you what his plan is. What do you want to know? I don't think so. He has to make it so it doesn't fall the river when he takes it down. So it, it doesn't matter. It's so I'm definitely not going to slide spend fifty five thousand dollars back on the today. I'm not really asking for that. I'm just kind of putting this out there right. as it's a problem. Well, it's a problem, but that doesn't have that doesn't deal with that garage. It's, on that property that's falling in the river, it doesn't deal with the garage in the next property that's falling in the river. Totally agree, but this this property is in the it's kind of in our process of yes. But so 
it's ulti ultimately we're going to be cleaning it up anyways. But I'm just trying to figure out how to recoup our funds. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm letting you know that this is a problem and it's, it's something that might really be our problem. And the dangerous so, buildings ordinance has the, it, it, it puts a lien on the. I, I think that that would, that could potentially be a way for us in a roundabout yeah. way to recoup our funds. That's why we have that ordinance. Let me, let me run that by um, Vermont, or like the, the grant. And I don't know how that would work. So if. To put a lien on it. Just timing wise, as Kristen was saying, so if. Uh, if you're looking into that, we're still not going to be able to make a decision until the 19th. He doesn't need us. No, not to I'm enforce not, the ordinance. I'm talking about the contractor. So if we, if yeah. we on the 19th said, great, we can refund our money, let's do it, that gives the contractor a week and a half. The contractor is only open to start. Okay, that was my question. So he's basically, out. he's out. So that would give us, so here's a, so this is what I'm wondering, is if, which sounds like, which totally makes sense, is to say, we'll be working on some options. Mm -hmm. At the same time, can we try and get another quote mm -hmm. for before the first, so that way on the 19th, hopefully we have another, like maybe, maybe we could squeeze it in. Is that crazy? No, but. Kristen says it's crazy. <laughs> I didn't say anything. That's, that's to have the the one contract there's other contractors well, that that's what do I'm saying is if we is if we get another quote what's up they don't have the same equipment he's got the gravel equipment but nobody else around here does I, I mean that's fine but well, I also have to get you the permits to go across the river so make sure you have it so I, I think it's clear yeah, that's a good question I think it's clear that the right thing to do is to take the house down before it falls into the river. And that's why you're bringing this to us. Yeah. Because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. But it's also by all the rules that we have to play by. Correct. If we went and did that, we likely wouldn't be reimbursed. Correct. And it's a big expense. Yes. And so we so just I'm have just to be fully aware. Putting it on the table. Yes. Only. Really? So being on the property. So you're going to continue to work the same channels you've been working. Yeah. You'll look and see if the dangerous buildings thing gets yeah. us anywhere. Yeah. Because it might, There's yeah. a, you know, it's an ordinance. Yeah, it works for that. Well, yeah. I mean, in other situations, it works. So we have to see if it works in this situation. Yeah, I'm not sure what it says. So we can do. We I can put do it that. up on the screen. Um, yeah. No, it would. But, I think the bigger question is, if we went that route, would we actually end up getting our money back at the closing? Uh, and that's it question that we hope he needs to ask. Well, people. we stand a better chance of getting our money back probably from a closing with the federal government in a buyout than we would with the estate. It, well, that's when, there. that's when it would happen, yeah. Right. But it needs to be explored, I think, before we act. So, but it sounds like the reality is... If I mean, that's a, that's a long-term deal, too. You've got to give the owners a chance. To yeah, right here, there's, themselves. you have to give them at least 15 days, it yeah. looks like. From yeah. the date of the order, so it's not going to so, be quick. Um, yeah, and it takes within thirty days after the appeal. But if they want to appeal, I don't well, know if those people would appeal to. exactly. Um, but still, we're well. Right now, the buyouts a value to them. That they'll get bought out whether the properties. Oh right, right. right. Build it's on top. They're in the bottom. But the people don't care where it is. It's red. So they get there. It has value to the estate right now. Because is there anything in that out. says that we can demolish? Where does it say we can demolish it and put a lien on the property? Does <coughs> Go all the way down. Um, if this is what they can do, I identify. don't think we could even take ownership of the property. We would. So identify the conditions. Identify the actions that would need to happen. Set a date to secure the building and abate the conditions. In that sense, it'd be to tear it down. Yeah, that's the Inform yeah. them of their right to appeal. And then yeah, certified yeah, mail. Was, was um, well, if I was where's the, the, where's the, the, the recipient of that estate, I would 
not be answering your calls right now. <laughs> So exactly. violations of civil matter. Yeah, so yeah, that's well taken. Civil penalty. That's just if they don't. Yeah, I mean. But I want to see where we can put that. Like I, our trash. I think it's the trash ordinance. We can, we can put it in Yeah, maybe there. this is the trash ordinance because it's not. Um, no, this is the. This is. Maybe the that house is trash. <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah. It's not um, well, habitable. It, that's a dated. Yeah, we're not going to be able to take that easily. Certainly not before tonight. Right. Okay. No, so no. I'll just keep. I'll just yeah. Keep cross your fingers. fingers. Cross your fingers. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to say it again. Keep working on it. I think we can do that. I think we can kick the can on it. But uh, I think we have to. But we're missing out on the ability to do it probably this season. So I think that we're likely river. looking at having that house be in the river. It's not necessarily our liability. But I'm just saying. It's like, not good. It's not great. It's not great. So we're. Tracy wants to say something. Okay. Well, I just um, one thing that worries me about it, and not that you need additional pressure, because <laughs> I know you're taking this seriously, but is that there's risk to other infrastructure if it goes in the river during flooding conditions. Cottage Street bridges potentially, you know, could take a hit. Just, okay. just one more factor to, to yeah, <laughs> consider. Well, it's not going really to go far because there's no water right now, so it'll be. Right now. No, I mean, in it's less, well, in, if it's in flooding, flood. there's so the next time the water comes yeah. out through, it's a lot of time. Yeah, not to mention the oil in there. Is there a way to go in and to mitigate the, the hazardous waste, you know, to get the oil tank out or to get no parts? No, I don't down think down you can. What's that? It's hanging from the building. You can't go in and help it. Not really okay. I say. What do you say? I say that. Um, Mr. Upson continues to <laughs> pursue this and that we're not saying spend $55,000 of town money that's unlikely to be reimbursed, <laughs> even though I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. E even though we know that we need to So the state right has now the water quality folks have no concerns over this existing hazard? They, don't. they probably don't know about it. We do know that they're very concerned. The water quality folks? Yes. So what, what's their recommendation? Tear it down. Well, who's dollar? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the great question, Danny. That's one you've just been batting around. Well, I, but I they understand don't that. They're the, they're they don't, they don't have any, any suggestions. The the I'll tell you, I'll explain to you something that I'm seeing, like the reality right. of things. There's a lot of stuff going on right now in a lot of different communities and at the state level. And everybody's kind of holding their hands in their pockets right well, now. Well, I said, the environmental, you know, they're the people that are concerned, rightfully so. They're the people that will penalize me if I, if I push my field tank into the river. If my dump truck it was, ends up in the river, it they'll find It was shown to the NRCS, Emergency Watershed Program, which is supposed to work within a year. It is not working within a year. It's going to be two years before they get there. But we've done the correct channels to do this. We've added in the buyout. It's coming back to the town at some point. In the meantime, it is probably going to go down the river. It's going to hit the Cottage Street Bridge it's and redirect the Lamoille into Granite Street. And I just want that on the record. That's, That's on the record. Not much doom and doom there. No. No. Get yeah. that in the minutes. She wants it, it on the record. Well, hopefully it's a big enough flood so when the water comes over at Jiffy Mar, it'll just go right down through Main oh. Street. And Yes. Yeah. So, it's smaller than the motel. Well, I'll be in Wolfgate before we know it. So Taxes are cheaper in Wolfgate. <laughs> All right. Uh, Moving. Go ahead. I want to move on. So no, we I, know, I, know. I know. I know. I'm just going to add. I'm just going to go back. So I understand yeah. it's private property, and it's going to be <clears throat> private property. Um, but is there anything that we can put up on our in our town, like along the road there, and what we in our right of way? That says to keep out. Can we can we put something that so that way some kid doesn't run into it yeah. or run off of? I mean, it's those kids really respect those, uh, those no, signs. No, no, I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying, just so we can at least say that we're trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. Right of way. I, if we can put I agree. In I, right I way, think it's I'm important just, to notify the public um, when we start notifying the public of certain hazards. Okay. If someone. If yeah, somebody does, does get hurt, okay. they're like, well, you didn't notify the public yeah. properly. Yeah. Or that's, enough. That's private property. Or so you didn't have, like, but I, I can, you know, we can also, 
um, I can put some pressure on their 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 attorney. Their, their well, sure, I wouldn't want to have a liability of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's theirs. Uh, I can have our own attorney put some pressure on their town attorney. Right? If we want to go in that, if we want to go down the, that route, we can. Yeah. Um, that's well, always an option. Can I ask another question? Yeah. So if their oil tank goes in the river while they still own the property, would they be subject to fine? Mm -hmm. So maybe probably. they should know that too. Yeah. So with this, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Good job. Yep. Education. All right. That's key. Yep. Thanks. I figured it out. Good. Yep. Thanks for bringing. Sometimes it I need to just bounce things off the select board. There you go. Yep. All right. And the community. Well Thank balanced. you. Community. <laughs> Next item five: the select board to discuss establishing a walking lane along South Main Street and give guidance to assist zoning administrator fire marshal in directing the problem parking in the area. It's, it's written oddly, but we discussed this at the last meeting, and we um, talked about painting a walkway on the west side of Main Street, Kristen. Yes. And the southbound uh, lane, off the, the shoulder of the southbound lane. Right. Yeah. And we directed the town manager to go ahead and do that, but for some reason there's a holdup. I thought my recollection was that, uh, at least what I was hoping was that the town manager would look into it and look for a contractor and get cost. Didn't really want it to go for any, any possible cost. Well, we were, t yeah, but we were talking about it ha trying to have it happen before school started, which is mm -hmm. sort of beyond the uh, scope at this point anyway. But, um, well, school's going to continue happening. Are there zoning administrator fire marshal uh, issues? So, yes. Kristen, can you speak I to that or you want to? I to the board, so I'm not ready to speak on Okay, that. I brought it. So, we talked about it when we did the walk audit, and Kristen's been trying to work with the property owners there that are parking their cars in, I have not talked in to that walkway. Agent. So she's been talking to the fire marshal about how there's a problem parking. In I the fielded area. several complaints from res concerned residents about line of sight issues and curb cuts that weren't necessarily always curb cuts. Be approved. Yeah. Any of those through there. Right. I don't believe any of those parking areas are approved curb cuts. And the My discussion house. around having a area for kids walking to school or pedestrians walking on that side of the street and painting it so that it was a designated area so it made it a little bit harder for somebody to just blatantly park on top of it and so, block it. So I absolutely understand that this is more complex issue than us just painting the sidewalk. So right now you have parking in places that were traditionally lots and no curb cuts. So you have people backing out across what we would be putting in, what was sidewalk. For example, the apartment building from Spring to Cherry, there was always a sidewalk there on that side of the street because there was no parking on that apartment building lawn. So now that's not a sidewalk because there's so much parking. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People are backing out across the sidewalk. Same with the Johnson place down the road. Same with Helpers, that that parking spot there, that was that was long. That was never a parking lot. I'm sure there's no curb cut for that either. Mm -hmm. And and there's absolutely no parking from the old Vance house all the way down, except for Pearlie's driveway. Pearlie's parking on his lawn, which again is not a curb cut. And then you got the whole apartment that is no parking. Mm -hmm. How do we know it's not a curb cut? Because it. There's got to be a curb cut. There's got to be a record. I'm guessing there's, there's no record. We don't do a permit, a written permit on curb cuts in this town until just recently. Why are you calling me? <laughs> I'm just saying. What do you want to do? I don't know. I would like to talk to all the owners instead of. Well, I believe we all would have assumed that you were going to do that already. So. No, I don't think No, so. but no. it's. Well, but we've talked about this a long time. Sorry, the flooding kind of took over. No, no, no. So, um, well, I think we're just blaming ourselves, and that's not helping anything. 
and we started the conversation that way. So I think what the whole point of talking about this is that we have recommendations that were given to us by the Planning Commission. We all acknowledged it was two meetings ago. We all acknowledged that it was actually a much bigger issue than painting. We know that. It means adding accessibility, which is nearly impossible in some parts of the existing sidewalk. We're not going to solve it again tonight either, but I think my understanding is that what we want to know is how we're moving forward, right? And are we moving forward? And so right. if we said, okay, we're going to paint, then we should try painting. My recollection, too, was to basically prototype some painting because it's cheap and easy. It's going to go away in a season. If somebody parks on it, we're not going to be able to enforce it anyway. But it at least is a visual that can give something. That was, so from that meeting, that was my memory. We can double check the minutes. But I don't think this is, like, again, we're not going to solve this parking problem. So we just need to know, OK, how are we going to keep moving forward? We're not going to be able to do anything this building season really anyway. So I mean, we can paint, but it's not going to I mean, it's not going to last that long. So and it's going to be covered by snow in two months. So that's the other question. And, and then is it something? It, then is it something that we're going to maintain with the tool cat? Are we going to plow that and salt it? I mean, it is roadway; it's level with the road. So I don't. Then we're going to have snow banks, and we're going to be directing children to walk along basically the road on that side of the road, where I think, where I think it's safe, where I think it's safer for them to be on the side. I don't think we can do anything. Yeah, but we can also we can they walk out there anyway. And, but at the same time, we can we could paint a southbound bike lane, so that way bikers could be using that lane, which we've said that we're going to in the yeah. downtown anyway. And so it's not specifically saying this is where kids should be walking. Right, right, right. It's just a bike yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to, I'm just. No, I'm just trying to say. Sometimes that. I have to be, um, yeah. I don't know what the answer is. Well, the ultimate It's answer, a tricky one. I think the ultimate answer is to design and build an actual sidewalk through there. Yeah. yeah. But well, yes, we course. have we have limited funds for sidewalk. We have lots of places in town that could use either a sidewalk that's non-existent or could use an improvement to a sidewalk that's just caught up to modern standards. And I think what we need to do ultimately is we need to prioritize and just start chipping away at it and building little like you get a little bit of sidewalk out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we yeah. just got uh, that yeah. grant extended, by the way. Good sidewalk, um, another year. We also, great. just to add, just so, and could we also add? I'm just thinking like what we could do, maybe potentially this season. Could we also add like in Danville, if they have a school? We already have one school flashing sign, but it's a little bit. I mean, there are a lot of kids that walk in that area. Could we add a school flashing sign further down? I was asked by a business owner there last year um, to see if the school could provide another, or somebody could provide another crossing guard at that um, crosswalk, the one by the church. And I talked to a few people, and I talked to somebody who was going to volunteer to do it, and then I just, no one. So. I thought there was a cross crossing guard. There is one down, and we talked about moving moving the officer up to that one. But then we put the radar sign up coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to slow traffic down there, coming, coming around the corner down the hill. So, you know, I think that that helps during school hours, be, beginning and after school, um, to try to help with pedestrian safety there. So we could maybe try to re-engage with the school. I remember when we used to have a crossing guard down by the laundry mat, yeah. mm -hmm. and that worked That's well. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea too. But um, it takes people to volunteer and step up. Dave Gross. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just from the uh, speaking from the pedestrian traffic and pedestrian safety, you know, um, we were asked to examine that area and report to you, um, which we did, and. Obviously, the elementary school immediately um, adjacent to the elementary school, um, excellent sidewalks, crosswalks, everything. The problem is any student who is trying to get to that area by walking 
it is extremely hazardous, as we pointed out. Um, and that's occurring today. So our concern, our recommendations were um, for obviously the other crosswalk, which I understand there's a conversation on, um, but also to get to the point um, in there. We felt that any type of visual demarcation on the road would serve to notify the drivers to slow down, that there was something going on, that it would also direct students that this is a safer area to walk in and hopefully slow it down. Because right now it is an unknown. It's good luck trying to get there. We had problems as adults even crossing at that curve um, in the middle of the day. Um, so if nothing else, I would strongly recommend putting this in. It's only paint. It's not the final solution. Obviously, a lot to be done. But giving that demarcation with the color is a heck of a visual representation, not only to the drivers, but to the children who are walking in that walk in this area. This is the safer area to go. If people park on it, you know, that's something else. Yeah, thanks for your input. Um, yeah, so again, I feel like ultimately we need to build a sidewalk and we need to figure out if that's, I don't even know if that's the top priority place. We have lots of places in town that need sidewalks. So do we need to put paint there? How do we put the paint there? I don't think any of us are traffic engineers, but maybe we are. But um, it'd be great to have some. I thought we were looking into the, the paint yeah. solution, or and then again to someone else's point, it's going to be covered in snow in two months. And can somebody look into a possible paint solution? Can you? Can you? Can I, should I make a motion no. that we look into the paint solution, was, find out what the cost will be, and um, yeah. see well. how we can move forward? To paint what? Well. A walkway. But what? I'm caught. I, I'm I'm caught between uh, a select board and a road foreman here. I'll just say it. And the state. Yeah. So I've tried to go in both directions, and I'm I'm no longer going to be the middleman. So if you want me to paint a sidewalk, I'll paint a sidewalk. But I I was told that the select board didn't vote on it. We don't have to vote on it. Right. Right. So if you authorize me to paint the sidewalk, that should be, I should be able to authorize the road foreman to paint the sidewalk, right? Yep. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think it requires a vote of the select board, except if the expenditure exceeds $5,000. $5, right. Okay. Uh, um, where is our road foreman? Not here. Not here. Yeah. So, tell me what you want me to do, and yeah. I'll do it. Find out how much it costs. Okay. To, to paint a solid, so what type? What, what are we doing? Yeah, tell me what, tell me what you want. Exactly. Like Two lines, lines, color in between. White with okay. green in between, just so like the, all the common so two, walkways. Two white are, lines. I still think the just green. basically doing a bike lane, that's basically what we're talking about. Solid paint. Yeah, but if it's yeah. a bike lane, then people aren't walking in it. You can just basically what we Is that what bike lane is? Yeah, it's, or, it's green. Like they have it in, um, there's the one I can think of is the one by the turn to go up to the hospital. Yeah, not familiar. Yeah, no. on three, is it 302? Is that 302? Yeah. Or two? Two or two. Or a painting to like direct foot traffic. Just throwing it out since it is state highway. If you paint it green, it is a bike lane. Yeah. yeah. So is that what we want a bike lane? Uh, well, that was right now. Kids are biking on the sidewalk, right? I can see kids biking on the sidewalk. So even if it's just 
a compromise of providing a safe bike lane for kids. There are lots of kids that bike to school. Okay, so cost. Hopefully they're not biking. Cost for a painted bike lane. I hope not. Okay. I got it. They're in traffic. Okay. I feel like none of us are really professionals in this area, but... Painting, painting a direction, right. say, use this sidewalk, go over it this way, you know, a simple... Mm -hmm. no. Okay, All right. so you look into it and yeah. see. Okay, thank you. Let's move on. All over it. Great. Um, item six, the select board to consider allowing both food pantry and Greensboro nursing home to do coin drops in October because we accidentally gave each of them a month. So, in so when we had it in July last year, October was open. We did, we didn't fill October. Well, then in August, the food pantry came and said, "Can we have October because it's available?" We said yes. Fast forward to February of twenty four. Greensboro Nursing Home came, and nobody, including myself, remembered that we had already given away October. To the food pantry. Don't, don't so we double booked. Well, it's saying nobody I'm did. I'm saying me, no, nobody remembered that we had already given it away. So I, I just said, you know, it's our air. Can we just let them both do it as long as they don't do it in back to back weekends? That was my compromise, I guess. So moved. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion. It's really not hugely enjoyable. Can we have a second? I enjoy it. Seeing my community members out in the middle no of the open street. We have a motion on the table. I even dropped cash in there, so. Second. Further protection. Yes. We should have a sidewalk there. Yes. In the middle. Yes. Um, That's a good So we have a motion sidewalk. and a second. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Aye. Thank you. It's not a bad idea there. <laughs> Sold it, felt like it. We need the money. Yeah. Item 7, select board to authorize executing the LBRT connector loop recommendations to be completed. Um, I mean, so these are... Why, why am I feeling like we revisited these? Because we revisit this all the Sherry, time and it doesn't and, happen. And, and these seem to be things that, Sherry, you, you're not getting I accomplished just, and you keep coming back to us. So. I, I'm not the one that's going to be out there painting the road. I'm not the one that's going to paint the side, the crosswalks, I am. I am. and I'm not the one who's going to put those Cheryl things down, or order the wayfinding signage, so or that, install the bike racks. That would be our road crew, right? So I just wanted to bring it back again because we just got this. The road is beautifully paved. The construction is relatively, you know, out of that roadway now. It has that nice pavement on it and so we could put side crosswalks in. Have you spoken to Tom about it? I don't speak to Tom about these things. I just bring it to us so that we know what we have asked to have done. Oh. Right, and it, see, it seems that then our town manager is stuck between the road form and, and us and we can I mean, we can authorize it and we can say this, that or the other, but if our time and resources are limited, then this doesn't seem to be our priority. Can I just ask, uh, can I just ask how much money we have left for road painting? Isn't there a line item for that? Or would this be on a trail? The trail is line item. The connector loop is supported by the, the portion of the USDA grant for the LVRT so that got moved so the to the painting, bridge. The painting of the so it's thirteen or fifteen thousand dollars. Can we? We can't use the grant. No. Do you guys feel grant? We can't use it until we get uh, a notice to proceed. We we can't have any eligible. Right. We, we can't get reimbursed for that. The USDA grant. So if we were so if we were going to do North Street, like the recommendation says, North Main Street yeah. to Route Fifteen, so and what we just you know, talked we, about. We spent. We can we can only spend cert money for the park oh, really? for act, but not no USDA funds. We can't spend that money yet. Yeah. Okay, well then. Opie, could you contact a professional painting contractor of the pavement type? Okay. And get a price on this plant as 
Yeah. And, and the this is very clear what needs to be done. Yeah. How R and L drawing, painting, and striping, and say what's this going to cost us. Okay. And on the 19th, bring us back uh, mm -hmm. a couple of prices, or at least a price, and yeah. availability for a contractor to get it done. For all painting. For all painting. Yeah. Including um, we just start for South Main Street. Or for, for, for this right here. Do you want any new crosswalk? Yeah, what it says right here. There's yeah. new crosswalks. Sure. Well, Does that get it all? Uh, well, well, there's a, there's some some crosswalks yeah. that. Read the right. question on the project. Right. Okay. I'll go with that. So item two. Uh, so let me go the other direction. Item five. Yep. Yeah. Installing Sharrows, yeah. which are share the road with bicycle indicators. What do they call them? Sharrows. <laughs> Oh, oh, downhill. <laughs> <laughs> that made my night right there. Uh, item two is to create a bike lane <laughs> in the uphill direction. Why don't we just do Sharrow's both ways? Did you, were you going because the bike lane sure is so they can ride at an uphill harder than downhill. Yeah. You could easily ride downhill at the speed of traffic. Easily. You can do it all easily. Time. Yeah, by going uphill. And you can ride, ride at the traffic. Yeah. But that's what I, I in that's my mind, I worked that one through because I asked the same question. And it's to give them a place to go at their own pace. Okay. Without running them over. All right. Okay. I'm guessing. Yeah. That's yeah. my luck. All right. Okay, so just so basically you're it's asking to two see five. one, two, and five. Do we want to have for the paint removing? And, and is removing in there too? Isn't is the file gonna do that? Just yeah, the file's gonna do it. We yeah, and I wouldn't remove it. I wouldn't remove it. Put it down. <coughs> okay, so just items two and five. And sorry. crosswalk. Yeah. Yep, uh, just start up here, which I agree you should have crosswalks all around the same section. Now that this paving is done, we can put those crosswalks in. Yeah, especially with a library coming online and everything. So and that's not even part of the connector loop. Line, that's yeah, the as far as the bike racks go, I believe they need some sort of research. I would recommend them coming from the one of the committees. There's a dozen committees. Do something. Rec committee. What are you talking about? Rail trail committee. What bike needs committee, research? The bike Bike rack. Yeah. I mean, we up. own bike racks from a previous grant. They're sitting in storage that just need to be put out. All right. I say we should put out an RFP for somebody that to put them in. They're like just loops that you just like. Awesome. They're three, like Where it's do you want? Not. I'm trying to get three. stuff done, Opie. Throw them in the back of my Their locations so are, are supposed to be at. Yeah. So one is one deployed left. by the LBRT, by the, by the yellow barn. There's so one left. There's one left. I'll find a home for it. So item eight. There were two. I took one. Oh. I think I got two. <laughs> there were still two. It's fine because in that one of them was supposed to be over by Wright Farm Road anyway, so it's pretty much right. So there. that one's so. there, but there's still one for the library, and there was supposed to be one for okay. here, I thought, or the Plaza. Mm -hmm. No, it was actually the. It was like the depot, the, the library, stations. one on Main Street, one by the edge of the pedestrian park, like the park by the village restaurant, and then the one over by Wright Farm Road. There's so if the there's only one left, then it's supposed to go to the library, I guess. So I okay. We I, ended up I we mean, ended I up actually switching because East Hart, library, East Hartwood got one too. That's still a construction site. They don't want stuff in there, <laughs> so we have to wait till the library. Let me know. I have experience we, deploying these now. We don't own that site yet. We are still there. So. Yeah. Right. We don't so, okay. So we you can put it on the side by the. So items number two and five in the recommendations the is what the painting. That's what you want him to get an two estimate for. Two and the crosswalks. Did you get the crosswalks in there? And the, what what crosswalk specifically? The crosswalks yeah. from the pedestrian ten. test ten. course. The, the one by the Legion, right? That cross ten. Nine, ten. The ones here. I wouldn't remove any. This one was a temporary crosswalk. Right. The other, we, we moved that one here on the corner for, so because the sidewalk was closed, the sidewalk's now open, so we should. Right, but the pedestrian task force safety recommendations didn't put that one back in that just basically goes to the driveway to that little house there. Okay. Um, it moves it up here. So this one does stay right. so here because four, this is where people cross. Here. You walk in the square. On this on, on every yeah. 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 That's what yeah. it should be on this intersection. Yeah. yeah. Please. You shouldn't have to go up one street and around. You should be able to go in the direction. Well, it. It's not that high of traffic. 
And then one at the bridge, it says in here, which is another great idea, this end of the bridge. So the crosswalks and the bike lane and the sharrows. So the sharrows. Two, you five, get the nine sharrows. And ten, right? Two, five, nine, and ten. Yes. And we're going to deploy the ten. last existing bike rack, and I'll put it when, on when one of the ready. committees to do additional if they want. Figure it out. Okay. Second. All in favor. <laughs> so. You have people voting on that. No, it's because <laughs> it sat idle, so it, it, They've had enough. it stopped. And then when it came back on, it automatically muted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're good? Yep. We got, everybody's got that, right? Yeah. All right. Moving yeah. on. Item A. Uh, item A. Oh, slide. my goodness. <laughs> slide four to discuss creation of a building and grounds maintenance position and draft job description. I thought we were just discussing that we were going to have a discussion about it. It's really a discussion, all right. Um, when, I guess I missed this, so when, when was this? Like, did you guys... So, we've we discussed a couple of times in meetings about getting some help for um, the town offices because the workload is so heavy. And I um, took it upon myself, because I hadn't seen anything yet, to draft this thing, because I feel like it's um, it's been... The entire time I've been on the select board, we've had a combination of references to our road crew versus our public works department. So I was looking to um, supplement the staff and figure out a way to make um, a actual public works department versus a sticker on the trucks and then a road crew. So it was just an idea, and if people, I, you know, I had a few responses to the uh, draft that I sent out in the email, and I asked to have it on the agenda, but if you guys, if it's not what you guys need, or you have some other thing to present, then great. I, you know. I'm, I'm in favor of simplicity, and I think if we renamed the road crew to public works, and then we allow the town manager to prioritize based on these different projects. And why introduce a whole other job position? Well, because we talked about having an additional part-time I think person. this was, I now, like when we were budgeting, you talked about like having somebody who could mow lawns and, and do like some of the stuff that, um, say, Edward does right now. That would because now is CDL that would free him up to do other projects, and is that kind of what you were thinking, Sherry? Yes. This is like what we talked about in the last two meetings yeah. at the end of the meetings. Opie was here, I think you oh, were here for one of those one. times, yeah. Um, so maybe this isn't the answer so, to so it. So, more of a dedicated village, um, village type position where they're Keeping an eye on the downtown, doing the, the parks, trash, the, the trash, mowing, like mm -hmm. the mowing, all these things that we don't yeah. have anybody that really Signage, do. Signage, tickets for parking, parking, parking tickets, so, dog officer. So somebody has a question. Well, so he has a question. He's raising his hand and holding. How about we pay him fifteen dollars now? Because it's a great job. <laughs> no, uh, so I envision something different. This 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 job description here would be. Um, within it, but I think we need someone, it's like more of a public works director, which would be a level under Opie, but would be o over the form, road foreman, road foreman, highway foreman would be highway. There would be, he would be over this person, because there's a person that does the, the, the general Buildings to the building general services. Could, he would be could they manage projects too? They could manage projects. There would basically be Opie's number two. It's a much higher level position. It's a management position. It's one this that would do budgeting. It would be it one that would like, be. This is like their assistant. Yeah. This, this would like be just one of the employee. one of the other people that does something. Yeah. It, it could be easily fall in the high. Mm -hmm. You know, we would rename the highway. You know, you can do them little things, but we need somebody that is going to take some of the, the management workload off of OP and Or the, the project management. The project management, they would basically be uh, in charge of 
yeah, you know, the grant, you know, Tracy would be working with them. They would be the person that brings stuff to OP. It would be a, a, a position that would, um, it would be a public works director. If you if you Google public works director. Can I apply for the job? Oh, <laughs> he would be a great job. He may rather have that job than be the, the uh, a, more of the administrator. Well, so that's, that's we currently have a town manager. It. And, and this is more towards a town administrator and a, and a public works director. And then you have your road foreman, your, your police chief, your fire chief, your recreation department employee, your cemetery person, your building general service person, all of these well, people. Well, you're like talking like a charter <laughs> now well, to do that. Well, you get carried away. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. Need to do so this really, position I'm talking about is can be done without a charter change. Right, right, right. But you're listening all the time. Well, yeah. But so we have, what we, have a ton of, we have a ton of projects mm -hmm. that need to get done. A ton of projects. Uh, um, and this know, could be pit. like a pilot, a um, pilot position. I think that position would be much more valuable. A recovery position. It would be this, this position makes the plan, the road foreman executes the plan. Would it be easy? That this person makes the plan, the mm -hmm. building general services. However, you get that work done. You could have contra a lot of it would be contract. You'd be charge of contractors, so you could have contract work done. He would be in charge of getting a contractor to paint the sidewalk. He could be in charge of finding a contractor to pour concrete for the sidewalk. He, he or she could be in charge of um, helping with the bid process for getting some of these road projects taken care of. They could be. Uh, they would be a public service. Public Works director. So I, I thought that was a much position. I was thinking probably not going to go for thirty grand though. But right. um, it's I, something we need. The town needs it. We've I, had growth in this town. I think in this mm -hmm. time that we it's overdue. I envision like similar to what you said, like a project director, a project manager, but a cro it would be like first sort of all projects because we have so many of them. And like right now we have probably five RFPs that we really need to get out for different projects. Right. And they, and but they all fall within public works. Yeah. Oversight. Right. But I'm just, yeah, a, a general idea, project manager well, at all that, departments. Would I, had, be. I thought that it's just you were somebody. interested in that, OP. Yeah. I'm just having somebody that opened it over could say, this is your project. Okay. And I said, somebody that would be able to say, this is what, need, this is what we're doing today, folks. So, what I, I, you so operation, I think, you, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but I think it's a great conversation that we're going to need, it's going to need to evolve. I, I have a, a big uh, question about how we're going to fund it. Mm -hmm. Good taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm aware of that. That's what that's we're trying to keep what those low well, We may have to stop funding some other things. That, yeah. Right. And so the yes. I mean, the big thing do we need decisions to have to be made here, people, about funding and if we're going to continue to fund some things that are yeah. nice or things that we need. I think the big thing the big thing and Let's the reason why it. the reason why this even came up is because we are super fortunate to have the staff that we have. We've been through two catastrophic events. We're really, really fortunate to have the time manager team and everybody working for us in town. But the reality is, is we're all only human. And so there's only so much, like there's only so much we can physically do. And so what I hear is that all the select board members want to figure out a way to help add capacity, whether it's to your office or to a public works department. I personally don't care. Mm -hmm. It can be this position that was overviewed. It could be a new sewer treatment plant person. I literally, Whatever, whatever you think it is that we can fit, that we can do to support the town, because I think we're I think we've been working really hard the past few years to keep our budget low, and we're always going to continue to do that. But the reality is, is that the town runs on people, and so we have to we have to have people, and we have to have people helping to grow it. Like the, the town's grown exponentially, and I don't think half the people realize even how much. So um, it's just remarkable how much you're doing in your office, and the office is small. So I just think, like, we've kicked the can on a lot of things tonight. It's going to keep happening, but I really would, it would be unfortunate to see us not make a decision about this this coming budget season, wait for another year and a half, and then have burnout happening. So I think we really need to put a fire under ourselves to decide what we're going to do for the, we've got two months before budget season, what it's going to look like, how much it's going to cost, where that money's coming from. 
and then try and get it into next year's budget. So do we form a task force Can to make that happen or do, do we do me a favor? Be your office? Can you do us a favor? Get us a figure on a full time position. It is probably seventy grand. What the actual cost us in the budget? I think seventy grand. Well, no, there's no. salary and there's benefits. Salary, salary, and benefits. salary and benefits. Can you do that so we have a real number when we start? So we also or fifty grand. I don't care. That, that, I mean, it's you know we also <coughs> competitive. Need to define what it's going to be because we've heard a lot of different. We started yeah. with right. salaries. It's we like Danny's and Casey saying what we really sure. need is project management, and I think that's what we're so, saying too. I just wonder. I mean, obviously, well, we're not going to uh, figure this I out would tonight. Like to talk about some other things before we go with project management. But I think we need more than that. Right. So I think there's issues if we really want to pick the scab, we can. But well, I would. Yeah. So I'm just going to say so. that we have a lot of needs, and we're going to need to prioritize. But we should continue to work on it. So why don't we uh, decide what we're going to do? I think. So do we do that through a task can, can force? I make a suggestion? Yeah. Uh, if, if each select board member um, picked a town, I would say look towards Chittenden County, I know I hate to say it, um, Central Vermont, Warren Waitsfield, Waterbury, and see where, look at their positions on their town websites. Same day too. And, just do, a, is, and just do a little bit of research and see what's out there. I know so, Killington has a um, director of public works. Yeah. I, I've yeah. Heard so just poke maybe poke before. around and see what's available out there. And then we can target, we can start calling those towns, find out what the job description is, find out what the, the compensation is. Yeah. We can look in the salary survey yeah. and kind of see what's you're going on. We, we. So we how does we. this Me ha the actually end up happening? Like, mm -hmm. is there a task force so that we actually have some you're um, the you're meeting the times? You're the bosses. So I think that the OP suggestion just now was that we all take that as homework and we all look at these, look at other And times. so we bring it back to just Edu a regular meeting educate and try yourself. to just try to work it out in regular meetings? And what they're doing. Yeah. Well, I think, the, I think it's, well, I just think it's a lot to do in, with, in a regular agenda for a meeting, but. Well, I think it's you guys are the ones that never eat and want to go. So, you know, keep the meetings short. Yeah. So do we want to do that or not? Do we want to have an extra meeting around it? Or I think uh, I'm just asking, you know, I'm always happy to do research. <laughs> I mean, I think it's important that we at least have a figure that what would what that look like in our budget? If we all go and do that individual research and look it up. You know what our other towns do. Well, I think you have to think about what we, you know, think yeah. about what we need right. in town and what, what, how are things going? Where, where, where are we having? Where, or where are we as individuals seeing that there's room for improvement in our management style or our operations or whatever the case may be? I mean, we have some pretty specific things that I think that this position with authority will remedy. Wait, no. I think that is Other than Opie, because Opie has got a lot on his plate as the town manager slash administrator. That's a that's a, that's at a different level than getting down in the roots and saying today's Thursday, today this is what's going to happen. And now all of these sub departments, you know, this is what the sewer is going to happen. The sewer plant, this is what's going to happen. The highway crew, this is what the the rec crew is going to put the the you know the, the, the whoever's working on the rec duties within whatever department is going to do the bike racks and this you know this is going to be that and, and that would be in the job description and expectations but it's still how are we going to pay for that and I, you can't there's no absolutely no way no way that you could start this conversation with money there's no way you can start a conversation like this about money we don't have the money. We got to come up with the money. We need to know what the job is and what we need mm -hmm. to what we need to accomplish. And the money is the money. We're, it's tax money. It's there. We just say, hey, we got to do this. We do this. We can't. If if we're going to say, well, we got to, Jesus, we got thirty grand. Well, 
I don't want to get anybody to do it for you. <coughs> well, right. But then my point is we have to make some serious decisions on what, what the priorities are. Yeah, once, once we get that you know, job and, and understand what the value of that person is, and we know we need X amount of dollars, then we can decide whether we're going to you know, buy whatever, gravel, or if we're going to hire a person. So what Opie asked us is, as a select board, would be to familiar, familiarize yourself with some other towns, which is great. So that's our homework. Okay? I've already done my homework. So mm, I'm sorry. Okay. And then, but I think, so Sherry's question was, do we have a special meeting? My understanding was, do we have a special meeting or a retreat? And I think, yeah, I think that we only have usually an hour and a half, two hours of these meetings. The trick is timing. So if we're going to do a special meeting before budget season, that means in the next month. Two. Two. What if we come back so. the next meeting all well informed and all agree 100% on what we want to do? <laughs> <laughs> and just, that How does that happen? Just like, poof. Like, you know, are you volunteering to write a job description? I have already looked up several job descriptions and got one half written. Sounds but like that's. I, it's not hard. Your homework's you, half finished. I, you've got to be familiar with cut and paste, right? You I must really be a cut and paster from way back. <laughs> what I really don't want us to do is create something that's not going to work for the town. So I think, just to put it back on you, Opie, the and your office, and not just your office, but Tom and Mike, like having the conversations before our next meeting, that's like, okay, if we need somebody, where did, you know, we know everyone's got so many different strengths. It's pretty, pretty obvious what they are, and it's great. So what are, what's missing? And if we can get a sense of that, so that way we're not jumping the gun and saying, okay, you need this. When you actually don't like, so being able to come back to us next meeting and be honest about, okay, this is what we really, this is what we really need. Um, when you say the town, you mean the staff, the current yeah. staff? That's what you mean when you say yeah. the town. Yeah, and I think the small. I think I think we're talking about two totally different things. If we're talking about a director, that's very different than somebody who's going <coughs> to do parking tickets and pick up trash. That's right. like that's little stuff. I'm talking about like bigger stuff. What do we need? <coughs> so that's a, that's on us. It's on us, but it's also on the town, on the town yeah. staff. And we tried that, because that's what I said two weeks ago. Opie brings right. back what you need. Right. And then that turned into well, we shouldn't be putting that responsibility. I hope ultimately it's us. It's not it. We we we're the ones that get voted in to run the town. Well, my we vote is the project manager. That's what I said. The, I did come like, back and I said we need a project manager. Right. Like who can just do? It doesn't matter what department it is. Doesn't. Like. Yeah. So that can get this sidewalk done and can get these things done and get out the RFPs and deal with the bids and like that stuff is really time consuming and it literally can be a full time job just to do that stuff and and it's not just you know bringing it to fruition like getting it done like from start yeah. to finish totally. um, a dedicated person because this is going to I mean it's a huge the amount. FEMA projects that we have, those are going to be going on for the next few years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally all these bridges we have to replace. And as I said, yeah, it's just constant, like getting out the RFPs and, and then, then yeah, getting in the bids and, and, and just all of this stuff. Like, somebody and then you scrap them over the next step. Yeah. yeah. It's. I guess I don't need the homework. Yes, you're scrapping the homework. <laughs> Damn it, I did it for nothing. That's why you should never do your homework first. And now you're more educated, Danny. It's good. I am definitely more educated, yeah. I, okay, so I'm hearing that loud and clear. I think it's also worthwhile for us to look at other towns that are maybe similar size or maybe slightly bigger and look at how they're, look at their staffing. I agree. And then it'll be about finding the right person for that that is, like, can meet those expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything, right. anything else we need from that? So we're not going to do job description. Project manager is what we're going to do. Is that what we just decided? Sound like that's I mean, you can still write, write up a job description. You can make up whatever job description. No. Know? And we can shave things off. We can add things. We can so I think two things. It sounds like the need That's what is project I tried management. To do. Yeah. Right? That's what I'm hearing from the side of the table is their need is project management. I think we as a select board should also look at how other towns uh, are structured because I know, for example, St. Jay has an assistant town manager. 
So maybe you don't hire somebody who's just a, you don't hire somebody whose job title is project manager. Maybe they're an assistant town manager and one of their duties or their main duty is project management right now. Or maybe it's something else. But I think it's worth looking. And I think it's worth us also just ruminating a little bit on what we think other needs might be. And I know Cherry and Dan have some needs. opinions. Yeah, there are other needs. There are yeah, other there's, needs. there's substantial needs. But all important. Yeah. Not important enough. No, they're all important. <laughs> but we can't minimize anything. It's all important. And I think you know, we have to prioritize. We ought to, to Kaylee's point, we ought to try to focus on on a solution that we, we think is going to be the best for the town by in the next couple months that we roll into budget season. We're, we're budgeting for it and putting it before the voters. Because Danny's right. So who's right to have the job description for the project manager? That's what we're looking for. I thought, okay. I thought I just said, let's look at it. It doesn't hurt to have one written up. Sounds like you already have one half written. Well, no, I definitely no, don't have a project manager. Good. If you don't really have to recreate it, I'm sure you can find another right. town that has it and so you can tailor this, it. Why don't, we, why don't we bring up whatever is in the public works director position and the project? But we're still in the discussion. Yes. Yeah. We're not going to, next meeting, we're not going to say, great, this is the job description. Right. We're just not going to do it. So why don't we all bring something that we like? That's like here. That's what. Bring what you got, Danny. Bring what you've got. It'll be like we'll talk about it at the next meeting, and just talk about it more specifically, and see like. So we can meet it beforehand. Yeah. And discuss. And if we need to have special meetings, we can do that. Okay. It works for me. All right. I always love meeting. <laughs> Especially if it happened during your office hours. Yeah. You don't have any of that. All right. I'm going to push us on to select board reports. I have a couple of just really quick ones. Um, the Equity Committee of the Town of Corbick uh, received a $10,000 grant from the Vermont Community Foundation um, for a project that we're working on to basically bring a lot of different um, town organizations that are funded by the town um, together to talk about equity and inclusion over about 18 months, so it's super exciting. Um, I want to thank all the volunteers in the equity committee who came together to put that grant together and the Vermont Community Foundation. Um, and then I also, um, well, that's my report. I have one new business one business. You guys have reports. The Downtown Partnership and um, Hardwick Conservation Commission have this community tree planting grant. We put these posters up. There's an application for people who want to adopt a tree. Um, there are potentially 30 trees. Hopefully 15 of them will go to property owners, um, at least 15. I have not received any application requests yet, but just saying. This is happening. Can you be anywhere in the downtown Hardwick? And the trees are free. In the designated downtown. Anywhere in the designated downtown. Yeah, which includes Granite Street, Atkins Field, all the way over here to, yeah. Okay. And when you're adopting a tree, it's being installed for free, but? It's being installed for free, but there is a commitment to take care of it. And the Conservation Commission will help with doing, in the, the town, Tree Warden is helping with this to do the process of ordering like the host, trees and hosting. Host yeah. <laughs> it's an it's adoption. Yeah, you have to take care of the thing that you've adopted. And they're pretty big trees, right here. Um, I don't know that they're, yeah, they're different. Yeah, the part's not worked out yet. There are different types. <coughs> All of that gets worked out, but it's for next spring planting, so Sometime between now and December 31st, if you have an interest in adopting a tree in and the spring, the fill out the application. Yeah. All right, great. New business, old business? Uh, just a little bit of old business. I know it didn't look like in the minutes, I was at the last meeting, but it didn't look like we got a report on where the library's at with their budget. And um, it would be great to just get a report from them 
It doesn't have to be that in person. It could just be an email just saying where the project's at, what their, what their numbers are. Um, Along those lines, it'd be nice to hear from the um, electric department how their search is going. I haven't heard anything in a while. They should have, usually they're here. Second, Second meeting, meeting of the month. Yeah. So they're supposed to be here on the 19th. Yes. Yeah. Miles coming. Okay. We should have an update on that. Great. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is really for, so this was uh, given to me by Jan, but there are a bunch of people in town who, uh, so I just read it really quickly. To the Harvard Town offices, we are very pleased that North Main Street was paved recently. The wear and tear of our vehicles and persons was heavy. It is a sheer delight to travel to town and drive on the new pavement. Warm regards, Nancy and Al. Thank you very much for fixing the edge of the Macville Road and trimming the sidewalk grasses along South Main Street. Also, thanks a million for the repairs and paving to North Main Street across from Hazen, David and Jerry Shepard. Uh, dear road crew caretakers, I am so very grateful. I live I live long enough to enjoy the new pavement. I sincerely thank you, and so does my 2001 truck. That's from Dave. That's from Dave. So, you can give that to Tom and Dave. Yeah. Great. Uh, can we have a motion to go into executive session to discuss contracts to include the town manager compliant with ESA 313 something something? So moved. Second. All favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Go down. <laughs>